You know what time it is. I'm doing the clan generator challenge. Okay, so every Warriors YouTuber and like so many artists have done this already, but now it's my turn. I remember I made a cat name generator like this on Scratch when I was a wee lad, but I didn't think of doing something like this for some reason. It would have been a hit. But anyways, thank goodness this generates first art clans and not the clans from the books being released these days with like 20 cats in each. So here we have Coyote Clan, the unwilling and demure. Yay, I get a clan of stereotypically cowardly cats. I mean, I'm not complaining, but that doesn't exactly sound coyote to me. Or maybe it does. Then again, the clans are named after their founders and not necessarily about who they are and how they live. So first up is the leader Crane Star, a blue tom with short fur and hazel eyes. I decided to try and change up my usual cat designs and style with this challenge, which I mean, is a good thing. I've been drawing these battle kitties in the same 15 year old style since I was about 15. And while there's nothing wrong with not improving your art, especially if it's just a hobby for you, it's always fun to do something new. This kind of tapered out after the first few cats, but at least with Crane Star, I made him look more lean and triangular than I usually draw cats' faces due to his namesake. I know this generator is pretty specific about what the cat's patterns are, and it's implied that Crane Star is solid blue, but come on. This is more fun, and I tried to give him vaguely crane like markings. Next is the Deputy Black Mask, a short haired black mackerel tabby tom with gold eyes. I decided to try and give him more of a rectangular blocky face with minimal success. I managed to give him a somewhat stocky frame, but I ended up smoothing his head into a more round shape just for aesthetics. I also realized that for the longest time I was mixing classic and mackerel tabby markings up, so oops. I don't know how that happened, but you can see I made the mistake in my genetically accurate warriors video. I guess I'm just not a cat person. My ex is a cat person. Maybe he also doesn't know and I won't feel as bad about not knowing. Ha! <laughs> he doesn't know either. Wait, shit, he did know, damn it. Well, moving along from that, back to Black Mask. I wasn't exactly happy with how I drew his tabby markings, so I decided to add to them. I was happy with his facial markings though. I enjoyed adding more and more details because I could since I figured I needed to make his name make sense. Next is the medicine cat, Rowan knows. A long-haired, red mackerel, pseudo-tabby she-cat with copper eyes. And if you know me, you know I love giant, fluffy, slightly intimidating medicine cats that don't exactly fit the softy, spotted leaf mold. I tried to make her look a bit like a Persian with a flatter muzzle and a small cat beard, and I like her design a lot. I was thrown for a bit of a loop with what copper eyes were. I just assumed that the only eye colors in cats were blue, green, amber, and hazel because Warriors has a very limited understanding of cat genetics, but apparently people classify what I classified as darker amber eyes as copper, and lighter copper eyes as yellow or gold. I may have been having a bit too much fun with how fluffy I made her, and with her stripes, but I'm pretty happy with how she turned out. Slug Cloud is a long-haired black mackerel tabby tom with copper eyes, the first warrior. I decided early on that I wanted to make him related to Black Mask, and so I used some of his colors for his color palette. I attempted to make his head similarly blocky, but it didn't exactly work out as planned, and I think because of his proportions, his head looks a bit more circular than I'd wanted. Since the top warrior listed is generally the most senior in the allegiances, I had intended for Slug Cloud to be Black Mask's father, but after finishing the roster, I decided that he works much better as his oldest son just due to his features looking more like a mix between Black Mask and one of the elders than a cat who could have produced him, if you know what I mean. Even though Slug Cloud didn't turn out exactly as I'd hoped, I'm still happy with his smug little face and pose. That brings us to Barley Ear, a short-haired lilac tom with copper eyes. I decided to have some fun with this one, which is to say I decided to make him look like a chonky barn cat and give him a little bit of a bashful personality in his pose including blush. I later decided to give him a mate who was also blushing because you always have to have one cinnamon roll couple in your cast of characters. You'll have to wait and see who she is though. 
I tried something new with Farley ears posing. In this challenge, I decided to experiment with more detailed paws, and I think I ended up drawing one of them wrong. The paw anxiously rubbing his front leg. Maybe he should have the largest toes on the top and the smallest on the bottom to look a little less awkward. And I think I fudged up one of his ears. But as a whole, I love how he looks, and I would not be surprised if I draw him and his teeth again. Pigeonheart. A blue tom with long fur and yellow eyes. Here's where I kind of just went for full stock cat. I made his posing and was like, okay, he's fancy enough for me. Which, I mean, I've been doing this pose a lot since. So it was good to work out. They're stock cats and warriors. So Coyote Clan deserves at least one moldable cat that I can always send on patrols or something. And that cat will be Pigeonheart. I went with relatively generic blue-gray fur and briefly pulled up a few images of pigeons to determine where I wanted to add darker and lighter colors. Looking back on him, I could have definitely made him more fluffy, but I chose not to and honestly, if I were to do that right now, I would try to make his fluff look like feathers and incorporating birds into cat designs has never been my forte. Check out my The New Prophecies Design Challenge video if you want to see me struggle with making a cat's tail look like a feather. All in all, I was pretty happy with Pigeonheart's design, and I had a lot of fun with it. The singular apprentice listed is Nightpaw, a black tom with sparse fur and hazel eyes. I took this as him being a Cornish Rex, since that's the first cat breed I could think of with sparse fur. I'm not the best at drawing fur in general, so I knew that I was going to have a time with this. I ended up using the airbrush tool to give him the look of having sparse fur, and I'm not exactly the biggest fan of using the airbrush tool. I used it for shading all the time before I learned clipping was a thing, and because when you don't clip, it takes so long to shade with airbrush because you need to erase everything you don't want, I kind of just phased it out of my art. Also, I like clean hard lines that I can more easily replicate and color pick from. If you go to my Instagram or look at my other videos, you can see I draw color point cats with layers instead of airbrushing just because I like the aesthetic and don't like that tool. So Nightpaw was oddly stressful for me to draw. Spider Cloud was the one queen generated, and she is a short-haired black classic tabby she cat with green eyes. I decided I wanted to make her the cute queen who fell in love with Barley Ear. I kind of wanted to have it implied that Spider Cloud met Barley Ear at a barn or in the Two Lake Place and brought him back to the clan since he doesn't look like anyone else in Coyote Clan. I also decided to make her Slug Cloud's littermate. At some point, I might design Spider Cloud and Barley Ear's kittens since they are probably my favorite cats out of this whole challenge. We need to focus on more healthy relationships and more ears. We have so many toxic ones, and it's about time we get a person death that doesn't lead to the author's murdering one or involving pining over dead cats. And now we're on to the elders. We have more elders than apprentices in this clan, bringing me back to that The Prophecies Begin arc time. The first elder is Squirrel Briar, a short-haired, black and red mackerel tortoiseshell she-cat with hazel eyes. Looking at the warrior's elders archetypes, the most enjoyed by me would have to be the grumpy cat who's done with all of the apprentices for not knowing how to remove ticks, so I went for a grumpy look with Squirrel Briar. I also had the idea to make her Slug Cloud and Spider Cloud's mom and have their father be Black Mask, since they're all at least partially black tabbies. With Black Mask being spiky and more heavy set, I made her more of an average build and rounder, which matches with her prefix Squirrel. I'm not sure whether or not I'd want her to be Black Mask's current mate, if they had a falling out or if it was just a fling, or if she just wanted kits. Either way, both her and Black Mask are older, but Squirrel Briar is a significant amount older than any of the on-duty cats in the camp, has lived a long, good life, and deserves to be a grump now that her daughter is expecting kits. Coot Briar is the second elder. She is a short-haired, black she-cat with yellow eyes. I was torn as to how she would be related to the other members of the clan, the two blue-gray black cats without tabby markings were Crane Star and Pigeonheart. 
and while I considered making them litter mates, it didn't seem right to me, so I decided that Coopbriar would be Crane Star's mom, since Crane Star's design incorporates more dark colors and Coopbriar is black furred. She has the same leg, tail, and ear accents that Crane Star has, but on a much darker scale and to match her description. Coopbriar also is in a sitting position similar to her son, but she's looking up. I like the idea that she used to be a deputy but resigned in her old age, and her son eventually took her place and became leader soon after. I like the idea of Crane Star growing up with a mother who juggled deputy duties and raising him successfully until she eventually retired with her sister. Who is up next? And the last elder is Sleepberry, a blue she-cat with short fur and yellow eyes. This is Pigeonheart's mother. She is more relaxed, shares more of his markings, like on her back and her legs, and has lived a long and fulfilling life in Coyote Clan. Now she's an elder and enjoys telling stories, sharing fresh kill with her sister, and sleeping in the sun. She likely convinced Cootbriar to join her in becoming an elder after seeing her sister grow old as deputy. I like the idea of them being very close litter mates. And while Cootbriar is very ambitious and was dead set on succeeding the previous leader, she didn't want to get nine extra lives so late in her life and watch the rest of her clan mates from when she was younger pass. Sleepberry, unlike her sister, is now lazy, unserious, and happy as an elder and brings joy to Coyote Clan that Cootbriar is too severe and Squirrelbriar is too ornery to bring. The warriors and apprentices often come to Sleepberry to hear stories and hang out in the camp. And there we have it, Coyote Clan. Thankfully, this clan is tiny, otherwise I probably would have spent like five more months attempting to write this script. So, until next time, if you want to see more of my stuff, you can check out the links below. And if you want to stay and listen to me talk more, feel free to subscribe. We recently reached 400 subscribers, and geez, I have no idea where all of you came from, but I'm glad you're here and like my stuff. Bye!